Hey guys, on today's episode, I cut the front end off of a crew cab, then I weld another one back on it. So let's go dig into it and show you what I did. Well guys, thanks for watching the video. Last time you guys saw this truck, we had it on the 6-7 uh, frame, the F-450 frame for my crew hauler project. This truck is not uh, not for that project. I don't know if I made that clear enough in that video. So we're going to do a single wheel, short bed, uh, four wheel drive on this truck here. So uh, I have it off the frame now, and uh, I think I made a decision on what power plant to make. So uh, in that video, I was test fitting the firewall and everything uh, with that engine to see if I could do it with the factory firewall. And I hadn't made up my mind yet. I didn't have it uh, set back in there just enough, and I was going to have to modify things. So I still wasn't uh, clear on what I was doing yet. But after I got done editing that video, I uh, messed around with it some more, and I actually got it to fit uh, with the with the, the wheel well. The tire was centered in the wheel well with the engine in there, unmodified firewall. So uh, I know it's going to work with the 6.7 Power Stroke. So I think I decided to use the 6.7 Power Stroke mainly because I have that uh, good engine, and uh, I already have it and uh, i really like that engine so i think that was a uh, uh made my decision for me whenever i was able to get it to fit in here now we did have some clearance issues i had to take the uh the uh, uh throttle pedal out which i'm not going to need that because it's drive by wire it's because it was hitting the the lever here for the uh, throttle so i had to take that out the brake booster I had to take out uh, because the brake booster was going to hit the, uh, the vacuum canister on the engine I think with Hydro Boost there'll be enough clearance, so we'll do we'll convert it to Hydro Boost. It's a lot smaller than that vacuum boost canister there. The uh, steering column was right at the engine. There's the the fuel rail right here, and it has a uh, the fuel rail uh, pressure regulator on the back here that uh, regulates the pressure on the fuel rail, and it was bumping into uh, not bumping into this, but it was getting very close to this and actually bumping into the uh, the shift arm. So my plan was, like uh, like I did with my Ultimate High Boy, use a factory style steering column and use this and just have a rod going down to the shifter, so the cable like the uh, OEM would be on a 6.7, uh, but this is hitting the, uh, it would hit the valve cover and it would hit that fuel rail, so that's not going to work. I'm going to see if I can get this swift, swapped over to the other side. Uh, if not, I'll have to come up with something, maybe have to cut this arm and uh, move it in a different area so it'll work, but... Uh, that's pretty far down the road. I can make that work. That wasn't a big deal. Uh, I'm going to get get rid of the rag joint here and uh, do just a spine shaft like a high boy. So that'll get that cleaned up and uh, get it out of the way. We did have some issues here on the firewall. Uh, the the up pipes were hitting here. Uh, the, uh, the driver's side one was hitting down here and the passenger side one was hitting up here. So uh, my plan here, since this is up in the dash where you're not going to see it down low, uh, about you know right here is where you see it uh, I didn't want to modify the firewall because it messes up your dash pad or your firewall pad and uh, everything visually under the dash there I wanted it to look factory but up here you shouldn't be able to see it so I think I'm gonna have to notch this right here depending on what's behind it I think I should have room but I'll notch that out and kind of clearance gives those up pipes some clearance just so we're not uh, burning everything up under the dash here with that exhaust so close and the down pipe here it is going to be very tight, but I think there's room. I'll probably have to custom make the downpipe. Uh, the factory one, I think, will hit this pinch weld, which I can clearance it, but uh, I would prefer not to if I can. But uh, anyway, since we're doing that 6.7, you know, I'm glad to have a uh, direction on that project. I just got to find a single wheel chassis to work, work with, a full wheel drive chassis. But right now, uh, I have the truck in the shop here, and here's my, uh, my donor cab I think we're going to use for the uh, front end. So we're going to use all the front end here on this truck. For this one to swap out because it does not have the uh, the rust up here in the firewall and it's already been sandblasted and a lot of stuff's already been taken care of on this truck uh, the this front end here cab mounts are in perfect shape and uh, the floor is in good shape so that's that's pluses all the way around we don't have any rocker problems or anything like that uh, the problems that I don't really particularly care about this truck are in the roof uh, the back end here has all been replaced it's uh, been done decent but uh, Still don't know how uh, how they did everything and if it's going to last, but uh, uh, the roof 
and back here on the back of the cab and there's some brakes in the metal over here which are fixable but it's just not ideal we got some brakes right there and we have some uh, uh, holes right here we got to work on but uh, we're not using any of that part so just the front end on this so I have to get back uh, to this thing I'm gonna pull the doors off of it I have to pull the windshield out of it I'll probably pull the dash just to give me more room uh, then leave uh, dash pad gonna leave all this stuff in because there's no reason to take it out uh, because whenever I start putting everything back in that cab it'll be nice if it's already installed in here so like wiring harness and all that stuff if I use the factory one you know all that will be already installed and I just swap it over and keep it all nice and organized where it goes there I think I'm gonna cut it right here on the uh, the seam for the crew cab since these kind of overlap I'm going to try to uh, utilize that and cut this so I don't have to have an exact cut on that I can just kind of slide it under there and uh, uh, get it perfect and then weld it so I don't have to have that cut perfect all the way across there. Also, these seat rails that go right here, I'm going to try to cut these off uh, of this part and pull them separately and leave the seat rails intact for the seat mounts. And then that way uh, I leave the structural integrity for the seats and uh, we don't lose that safety factor because you know if you get in a wreck, you don't want that seat breaking off and moving, moving anywhere. So I'm going to try to leave that in place. Looks like there's just some welds along here where you can get to. We'll cut those welds to see if we can pop it loose. But uh, anyway, right now I have to get to stripping all this stuff down and uh, figuring out where we're going to cut it. Well guys, I got the windshield out. Uh, I got the doors off as well. Getting ready to, uh, well I'm not getting ready. I'm figuring out where I'm going to cut the cab here to separate this. Uh, the front section from the rear section and how I'm going to uh, surgically do it so we can make the other pieces back together. Uh, and have it all look factory and be in the correct area But uh, I got the windshield out right here uh, The way I do this normally is you take a razor blade and I cut the inner lip of that gasket And I just leave the top here because you don't need to cut it But I just cut that bottom edge and up the sides and then you just pull it out and down at the same time It'll just come right out of there and uh, That way it stays in there a lot better until you're ready to pull it out and then uh, you're not dropping it on the ground or something trying to trying to push it out there by yourself if you're doing it by yourself anyway but uh was surprised that there wasn't any rust in here i was i was expecting there to be some rust here because you could see some poking out of the gasket like right there and uh, some other spots look kind of rusty so uh i kind of expected this to kind of be all flaky and rusty there's a bit right there or is that just that's just old gunk from gluing the windshield in so uh, uh, that's a pleasant surprise. I wanted to get that out so I knew where I would need to cut here for for this. You know, if it was rusted up in here, I was going to cut higher because you can I can cut anywhere up here is my plan anyway. Uh, we do have some rust up here in the uh, the roof, obviously. Uh, right there, I did some poking around, and uh, there's definitely rust right there. So uh, I thought about cutting here. Cause there's a seam here but then you have to deal with the roof skin and splicing that together and i don't think i'm going to mess with that even though if we did that we would eliminate all this rusty area here in this drip rail and we have this seam right here to hide the weld and everything but um the the idea of having to uh, fit all of that roof panel in while you're fitting the cab in i think that's just going to be too much so i'm probably going to do this separate um you know, I'll probably still cut the cab pieces off of this cab over here just because we're going to be cutting it up to replace this stuff up here. But doing it while I'm doing all of this and getting all that to line up just uh, sounded like uh, not a lot of fun. So I think I'm going to end up cutting it here on the A-pillar like I originally planned. There's a lot less area here to screw up as far as uh, alignment goes. And it'll be easy to know if I'm out of alignment, you know, just a little bit. If it's down too far or up too far, it's going to throw this out of alignment. So as long as all of this lines up, I know I'm in the right spot. And as far as where to cut, uh, what I'm going to do there is this seam right here. I'm going to clean this up really good with a wire wheel and uh, measure off of that with calipers and try to get that as precise as, as, as we can. So I can match it over here on this cab. See that seam right there? These should be very, very similar, if not the same. I'm gonna check to make sure they didn't change it because this is a 69 cab. Uh, Ford could have changed stuff, but uh, you know, that's a that's a nice uh, hard edge I can measure off of and uh, cut this in the right spot. So that's my plan up here on the A-pillar. Down here on the floor, I got the uh, old seam sealer all chipped away here and uh funny enough they didn't even get it on part of the like right here 
it all went up here and it didn't even get right here where the actual seam is they were pretty sloppy with it and right here they didn't do a very good job of actually getting the seam sealer on the seam but uh, underneath here it's not welded on the bottom so that's good other than the uh, the seat rails here we have to bust some welds on that so these welds right here I'm gonna have to bust all these welds and uh, you know they have it notched out here for the uh, the floor bracing so uh, that's what I'm gonna do there and try to pull this out in one piece so we can build it back like I did from the factory have it all chipped away right here they had a big glob of uh, some harder stuff I don't know this is different than whatever they used here it was a lot harder but they filled this hole with that so that's gonna be easy for us to cut right here and then my plan is to uh, cut down this weld seam the crew cabs have this big ugly weld here where the regular cabs don't have that so uh, I'm just going to cut down this big ugly weld and just cut all the rocker and then uh, I might uh, do some rebuilding around here where there's some rust while I have it cut apart uh, and then whenever I go back together we'll just weld it all back together in one piece. There is a extra brace that runs along here to connect the two rockers from the rear section and the front section. There's a piece up in here and it is very, uh, not very rusty, but all this rust is from that. It's, it's rusty around that and under that and uh, it's going to be very hard to cut out of there. So I'm going to try to do uh, as much as I can when it's apart. So I'm not trying to do it while it's all together. But if I can, I'm going to pull that piece out and just completely take it out and replace it with another piece of channel and uh, strengthen the two cabs together. If not, I'll just add more to it and strengthen this all together that way. So that's my plan right now. And I'm uh, going to move forward with uh, just doing measurements and seeing if I can get all this marked together and then I'll start doing some cutting. Okay, I've done a lot of measuring on this cab and getting it ready to cut. Uh, first thing I did was take measurements everywhere, uh, you know, door openings. I measured the uh, top and bottom and side to side. And I also measured the uh, window openings at different points. You can see my markings up there. You know, just measuring the windows and uh, taking note of where I took the measurements because if you get if you get crossways, your measurement's going to be different. So I went off of the uh, wiper hole here, and then I marked it up there in the cab. So I'll be able because this is going to be gone. So I'm not going to be able to uh, line this up. So I had to get a, a known point on the cab. So the the wiper hole is what I lined up there, and then the top will still be there. And I'll measure that when I'm getting everything lined up. Just this is just to double check to make sure everything's good. Same thing here. I use this vent right here, and also the center of the cab would be easy to find. So I did those points, and obviously did the the uh, door openings over here uh, I did get different measurements side to side on these doors uh, the top and bottom was pretty close uh, the side to side was a uh, 16th of an inch off so uh, not a precise um, uh, built you know like Ford was probably slapping these together on the assembly line and they use things like this notch right here I'm assuming that is to line up these two pieces when they're joining that together from the cowl and the the hood here and stuff like that and these notches here I'm guessing were jigs or something I don't really know but either way what I'm saying is it's not a precise science what I'm going for is I want to get it as close to what it is now because I know that works because it worked with this truck so I'm going to get it as close as it is now as I can and then I'll know what it all worked and we won't have problems when we're trying to line a door later on and uh, trying to get the gaps and everything right same thing on the windshield trying to get a windshield to fit if your hole is all wrong it's not going to work so anyway since I have uh, have all that done, I have markings right here on all the uh, uh, A-pillars. I spent a lot of time making sure that line is in exactly the same spot on all the trucks. I measured from this seam right here, and I also measured from the top down, uh, doing it multiple ways to verify that it is in the same spot. And they are pretty consistent, uh, 18 and a half inches from the top here to this seam right here. So that is a very consistent seam. So went off that going up to here, seven inches. And I think it's 11 and a half from here up to the top. So uh, uh, it's it's pretty consistent uh, on these A-pillars. So uh, I did a lot of work to make sure that mark is in the right spot. And it is in the same spot on both this cab and the other cab. Uh, I am going to cut these different because uh, if you just cut them in the same spot, then you'll have a gap for the uh, 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 16th of an inch gap there for the, uh, the wheel. And uh, I don't want that quite big of a gap. What I'm going to do to uh, create structure back into this A-pillar is uh, once I cut this, I want them to butt. So I'm going to TIG weld the butt weld all the way around here. But I'm also going to have uh, pieces of metal on the inside that I'm going to have a strap in there and uh, 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 spot weld 
or rosette weld in here uh, on the on the inside and outside so it, it can have some extra strength in there as well so that's how i'm going to do it i think that's going to be uh, the best way to keep it from uh, having issues with the uh, bodywork later on so i'm just going to tig weld that it'll be a nice small uh, petite weld on there so uh, minimal minimal uh, grind work and everything there but uh, that's my plan so far so uh, I'm gonna do double checking and triple checking the hardest part is gonna be making sure that line is consistent all the way around here um, I might use a piece of tape uh, and try to get it lined up all the way around if you get off on that piece of tape it's pretty evident when you get back to the to the other side if it's if it's misaligned so I might try that I'm gonna try a few things and see what I come up with but uh, for now I'm gonna work on that and uh, get after it. well guys I've got some cutting done got the uh, the spot right here in the back of the cab cut out and I also have the a pillars cut you can see that uh, all that went good this is not that critical because it's going to underlap the uh, the crew cab rear floor section it overlaps that so this can kind of you know it doesn't have to be perfect because it slides underneath it and you just uh, uh, overlap weld it there so you have a lot of room to make up but this right here has to be perfect I decided to cut this first and then I'm going to match that exactly to what this cut ended up being uh, everything should be the same, but you know, just to triple check uh, and make sure. And the rockers here, I was kind of struggling with what to do. Uh, this all has been replaced on this cab, so this is not a factory joint. So let me take you over here to the factory joint. The regular cabs just have this spot weld right here and this seam, open seam here that had the uh, uh, seam sealer in it. And then the crew cabs, they have this weld right here that goes down along here. I want to splice it here at this weld, so if nothing else, it just looks factory, even though it, this doesn't look good. My welds hopefully will look better than this, but on a crew cab, it does have a big, nice, ugly weld all the way down that rocker, so that is correct. So I'm going to do my best to cut. It is not exactly in the same spot, so I'm going to do my best to try to cut it in the spot of that weld. Uh, if it's not exactly right, you know, there's going to be some uh, fitment in there, uh, so you know, that's if it's not exactly right, hopefully I can trim it back and make it exactly right. If I overcut it and it's I'm I got a gap there, you know, then then we got an issue. But uh, anyway, I'm gonna finish cutting this cab apart. All I have left is this part right here in the rocker. So I'm gonna get that cut apart, and then we'll start uh, on the crew cab. Well, I have the cuts made and everything separated. Uh, went pretty good, I thought. Uh, the cuts, everything went exactly where I wanted to. Got really good, nice straight cuts on the A-pillars, which is really important. Uh, back here, you know this stuff's gonna overlap, so it's not as important, but it still went really well. Have nice straight lines. Uh, the only thing that really fought me was there is some spot welds for this, this channel here is what the uh, seat belts and everything hooked to in the back of the seat. There was some spot welds right here, because I have, I have this piece uh, sectioned out here because on the crew cab it does this here the the back piece goes around that and it's a, a little bit more material there I need uh, for that part so I have that I'm not going to need that much because they flatten this out it's only about here the edge of that that crew cab seems going to be about here but anyway that's why I did that but that's the only thing that really fought me there was some spot welds here that barely caught that so uh I actually don't need all of that metal, so it would have been easier to move that cut back. I actually did. You can see there I cut further back a little bit, trying to make that easier to get that spot weld cut out of there. That one was a little bit further in. I drilled it out. But uh, anyway, other than that, went pretty good. There is a lot of material here in the rockers uh, that you have to cut, so that took a little bit longer to get all of that uh, cut nicely and square. So uh, we got that all taken care of. And uh, right here, I was really struggling with where to cut. But what I think I'm going to do 
is here this part overlaps this part so hopefully I can get that cut and pulled away and uh, opened up in there where that one will just slide in there so we'll see how that goes if if I can actually make that work but uh, that will be uh, fitment once I get everything put back together or going together anyway so this went really good this is actually heavier than I thought it was going to be so it's going to be interesting getting this thing off of my uh, cart here uh, might have to wait till I have some help in the shop or use my uh, cherry picker or something to get this off. It's actually quite heavy. Uh, the front is actually lighter than I was ex anticipating and the back is heavier. But uh, right now I'm going to work on cutting the cab and uh, we're going to start uh, separating the two pieces. I think that's going to be the hardest part is getting all this separated without just cutting everything. So going to get after that and see what we can get done. Well guys, we got the back of the cab and the roof pulled off of here. Just ended up using the forklift. It was a lot easier, as awkward as that thing was to carry. So now it's out of the way. It's working on the crew cab here. I have uh, almost all the uh, floor pulled away. Uh, it's uh, it's kind of tedious work trying to do uh, do a good job and be careful not to damage the rear section because that's the part we're keeping. So I'm doing a lot more damage to the front section since that's not the part we're keeping. Um, you know, just going in here and cutting all the welds and making sure everything's pulled apart. Uh, there is a couple of spots where they welded underneath like right there You can see the weld mark so I have to go underneath there It has undercoating on it So I have to I'm gonna have to chip away the undercoating to see the wells and cut the wells But there's a, luckily there's only a few I think there's only like uh, four spots they welded on these uh, On the back side so uh, at least we don't have as many welds on the bottom to do It's kind of trickier to work on the bottom and on the uh, crew cabs They have this rail that runs along here that the seats all bolt to and I was able to cut along here and uh, pry that off. Let's see if I can show you guys. See that seat rail? I was able to cut the welds and get it loose. So this is loose from the floor. It's still attached back there, but uh, uh, it's it's uh, loose from the front section. So whenever I pull this off, that rail will still be there. And when we put the new one in, we'll slide it in on top of that and underneath this and try to sandwich it together just the way they did from the factory on these crew cabs. So uh, it's going really good right now. Uh, the uh, the floor is coming apart fa fairly easy. You know, it's still not uh, just super easy work. Uh, it'd be a lot easier just to cut a straight line across here and butt the other one up there and weld it up. But uh, this way, it's going to be a lot stronger joint and it'll be uh, factory correct, you know, like they did from the factory anyway. On, the, on this here, uh, I think I'm just going to follow the weld line here and just try to cut that off. I'm going to try to favor the back. Uh, nope, sorry, favor the front a little bit. So uh, then whenever we get the other piece up in here, I'll just trim it and get it to fit up there nice and perfectly. And uh, uh, some of it might actually slide up and back back behind there if I can get that to work. We'll have to see once I get this cut apart if I think I can do that. You know, that, that will be another easier thing to do if I can slide some up underneath there and then weld on the top and instead of having to butt it up. But uh, it's going pretty good. So uh, I'm going to finish cutting all this and then I'll cut the, uh, the A-pillars there. And we'll get this out of the way. So I'm going to get after it. Well guys, I was wrong. Turns out they uh, they welded that underside all the way. I got the undercoating kind of cleaned off under there. And they booger welded all the way down that seam. So uh, what I thought was just a few welds here and there that I could see. Uh, turns out it goes all the way along here. So what I'm going to end up doing is I'm just going to cut the front section. Just go ahead and cut all the way through here where it's one layer and see like right here i've already uh cut through it some uh cutting the welds here so i'm just going to zip all the way along that to get this separated and once i have the front clip off i'll be able to, the piece that's left over under here i'll get a chisel in there and bend it down and it'll be a lot easier to cut that weld from the back side instead of trying to do it from underneath and not perforating through this piece which i don't want to do because we're keeping this piece so once I get this piece off of here, I'll get the remainder of it bent down and just zip it off when it's at like a 45 or 90 degree angle. Then I'll just clean it up with a grinder and uh, we'll be ready to slide that other piece underneath. So that's how I'm going to do that. So I'm going to get after cutting this. Just going to be boring, uh, kind of tedious work. But I'm going to get it all zipped off. And uh, I think what I'm going to do on the cab is uh, I'm going to set it back down on the, uh, on the uh, metal here where it's supported all the way across. And then I'll have the forklift under here under the floor and once this gets cut off I'll have this attached to the forklift and I'll just back up out of the way 
then we won't have any uh, pieces falling around or anything. Wasn't that big of a deal on that one because it was just the back piece here. There wasn't much uh, to support here. I just had some blocks underneath it. But here we have the whole cab here and this whole section here. And I don't know what exactly it's going to do. So uh, I'm just going to attach this to the forklift and use that to haul it off. So I'm going to get after it. Well, here it is, guys. Got it cut apart. Uh, didn't fight me too hard. Uh, the uh, the extra uh, metal they put in the crew cabs here in this uh, uh, the rocker here, it was pretty. Uh, see how thick that is. I had to cut through all that, so that took some doing. Uh, you know, it's just a lot more metal you got to cut through, and the uh, rocker here seemed to be a lot thicker. See how thick that is? Quarter inch thick right there. So uh, had to cut through all those layers. Hopefully, I can kind of clean some of that up. But uh, we'll see how it makes back together. Here's those seat rails I was talking about. They came out uh, pretty nice there. So that's just going to slide back under the uh, uh, the new the new floor here. And we'll weld that back on there. We'll clean up all that rust, obviously. And I'll put some coating on that to keep that from rusting anymore. Because it's, it's sandwiched in that metal there. So it doesn't have anywhere for moisture to get out of it. Or if moisture gets up under there. But uh, yeah, it came apart pretty easy, I thought. The... Uh, the A-pillars got cut pretty easy. I ended up moving my mark down just a little bit uh, to adjust for the thickness of the of the cutoff wheel when cutting that. So hopefully these two uh, pieces made up just perfectly. But uh, if not, there'll be a little bit of room there to, to do a little bit of uh, fitment. If I need to go bigger or smaller, you know, I can trim some more off of it. Or if I got to make the gap just a little bit bigger, we can do that and fill a little bit of the gap. But uh, hopefully it'll be just butted right up there and perfect. But uh, for now, I just got to get this out of the way. And then I'll get that piece swung around over here and start uh, putting it all back together. So I'm going to get after it. Well, guys, I have the uh, new cab section uh, pulled up here to the crew cab. And it actually is going together really well. Uh, I don't have it pushed together far, far enough yet because uh, the rocker on the other side is hitting right here. I still have to do some trimming on that rocker there, which uh, I knew I would because I, I cut them a little long. Or, you know, I didn't I didn't cut them at the same spot just so I could trim them by hand right here and get them uh, so I could fit it basically and get it uh, nice and uh, even gaps all the way so I got a nice straight weld there. So once I get that trimmed up, this will slide back under there further. And then the, the A-pillars there will uh, line back up. What I'm going to end up doing here is uh, the spots here where it's flat, I'm going to I'm going to weld some uh, some metal in there. On the inside and I'll drill some holes here and uh, spot weld it and then uh, so it'll be double layered and uh, flange there so it'll have a lot more strength I'll do it out uh, do it out here too so it'll have uh, a couple of spots and add some extra strength back in there because uh, this is your rollover protection basically I uh, don't want to have a weak point here that could break off uh, so adding some extra strength in there and then uh, once I get this all fitted up we're gonna do some stitch welding in that and then do seam sealer on all of that just like the factory did, and hopefully you won't be able to tell tell it apart from a factory crew cab. So, gonna get after doing a lot of trimming and fitting, and uh, inching this thing uh, up in there where it needs to go. Then I'll check my measurements I took earlier, if you remember from the beginning of the video, and uh, up here on the windshield, and make sure all that's good, and then we'll burn it all together. So I'm gonna get back to work. Well, guys, I did a lot of trimming here on the rocker, and the uh, thing went together perfect. I think I didn't get uh, didn't leave quite enough metal here on these cutouts. So there is a little bit of a gap there, unfortunately. I'm going to have to fill those, or I'm going to make a, another panel that goes in there so I can just kind of fill that when I weld that all together. Just a little bitty, like, quarter-inch piece of steel I'll put there while I'm welding it. But uh, other than that, this thing went together perfect. I, was, I trimmed about a quarter-inch or so off of this, maybe not that much. Um, don't have it lined up perfect. It, it does fit up a little bit better. i got to trim just a little bit more there, but the uh, thing was going together perfect. The A pillars are lining up really good there. Really happy with how it's going together. And I have taken my measurements from my windshield and my door, and they are all either spot on or within a sixteenth of an inch. So uh, everything's going together really well. Uh, this is actually way easier than I thought it was going to be. Uh, you can see this side fits up nice and perfect. I still have to cut out this section of the rocker. I think I'm going to do that before I weld all this in so I can get in here and uh, pry that apart and uh, see what all I need to replace. So, but I wanted to get this kind of fit it where I, where I needed it before I did all that because when I cut all this out, you know, I'm not going to have this here to know where it needs to all line up. So, that's how I did that. Uh, this is all, 
all this slid up underneath there just like it should and fit all nice and nice and neat so really happy with how this is fitting and how this is going this whole uh, front end firewall swap so uh i guess last time we uh, saw this didn't really uh, have a plan uh like i kind of didn't know what frame i was going to use didn't know what engine i was going to use all that kind of stuff but i think i have a plan now and i've actually started getting parts for that plan so uh we're moving forward with it pretty fast uh usually when i get on a project like this and we get to this point i kind of get uh excited and start buying parts and uh really get going on it so i'm at that point now so trying to get you guys all caught back up uh right now the plan is uh keep the factory firewall you know since we're doing all this work you know obviously going to keep the factory firewall but i'm going to use a uh, super duty frame i'm going to use the six seven power stroke since i already have that engine and uh using the factory firewall and getting it all the fit there and then uh we're going to go from that uh since i'm using the uh, six seven engine and saving a lot of money versus the seven three uh buying all new stuff since i already have the six seven uh, i'm able to do a little bit more to the suspension so i'm going to do uh some uh, dual rate coil springs up front uh king king shocks because i like uh i like a nice smooth ride and uh deaver leaf springs on the bottom uh for the rear so uh should be a really nice uh, riding truck and drive really nice and smooth so right now i'm going to go out and show you what i just picked up yesterday and uh, it's for this project so let's go check it out well guys here what here's what i picked up yesterday it is a uh, 2015 F250 crew cab short bed frame. I think it's going to work perfect for this project. Uh, the, the frame, the, uh, the what do you, not dimensions, the uh, style of the frame rails are different than uh, the uh, crew cab, uh, not crew cab, the cabin chassis frame I used to for a mock-up. So that is uh, kind of worried about that. But uh, my goal now is to get that cab, the rust repair done on that cab where I can get it set on this frame and figure out how everything's going to fit together. Uh, I do have to shorten it. I think it's six inches. I have to look at the measurements. Uh, it's not much. I have to shorten it six inches. So I'll probably do it here, right here, uh, where the uh, the frame is nice and straight, either there or there. These cab mounts aren't going to work, so I'm going to cut these off, and I'll have to relocate them to uh, wherever they need to go. Uh, you, these usually have to come up and up here to work with the bump side cab mounts, so we'll just cut them off flush and move them where I need to go. So uh, all that is, uh, it's a nice straight frame. It's an Oklahoma frame, so it doesn't have any rust on it. And uh, it doesn't have any axles, unfortunately. I did get the rear end. So this is a Sterling 10.5 out of that 2015. It has a uh, e-locker on it, so an electronic locking differential. But it is the Ford uh, one. I have to see if I can control that. Uh, I think they're like a pulse signal. So you can't just run 12 volt uh, constant to them. I have to do some more research to see if I can use that. But uh, this is probably, I haven't found out the ratio yet, but it's probably 355 because that's what a lot of the 6.7 trucks were, the 250s. So uh, if it's 355, I'm going to have a hard time finding a 355 front axle because they didn't start that till 2011. And there's a lot less 2011 uh, front axles out there. A lot, a lot of 05 to 10 front axles. Uh, six seven axles you kind of got to pay a premium for because there's just less of them so the, to get that ratio so i might be changing out the ratio if i do i might be changing out that center section to like just a, uh, a regular uh, a mechanical locker or something of that nature uh, instead of the e-locker dealing with that and having a switch and everything so if i have to do that i'm definitely going to change the gears on the sterling because they are a lot easier to deal with than the danas they have uh, the shim packs are like they have this own little shim pack thing that goes on the outside of the bearing and they you can a lot easier to set the set the thing up versus the shims behind the bearings like the danas have but anyway we'll uh we'll cross that bridge when we get there we're pretty far from that stage um it doesn't have any i have one spring over here and i don't have one over here so uh thought it had both springs but it didn't have we're missing one of the springs and these are uh longer i have some 05 to 07 springs but i don't have any of these long ones so I don't know what I'm going to do because I wanted to get it mocked up before I knew what size springs to get because you can get those Deaver Lee Springs in two and a half or four and a half. And I don't know what height I want yet because I don't want it too high. I don't want it. I want it just perfect. So I don't want to order until I have the bed and everything on the cab on there. So I know how high to order it. So I might have to try to find a spring or just try to guess with one spring or I don't know what I'm doing yet. And I don't have a front axle yet. So I have to get all that stuff and uh we'll get this thing in the shop and uh, see if we can get that cab mounted on there and uh see how it looks so i'm gonna get after it 
Oh, I'm pretty close to uh, getting this thing ready to weld up. I have my uh, my uh, flanges welded on one side, on this side over here. What I did was uh, this piece is welded to this piece because it's further in. So when I jack it up, they all go together. And uh, that was kind of a big thing because it, since it's pinched under there and overlapped, you can't you can't go up at an angle and weld them all on one piece because you got to jack this up and as it goes up it leans in if that makes any sense so the like this one here I welded up on top so that when this goes in it goes in you know basically so it all go together when you jacked it up over here you can kind of see the process as I'm doing it I just have it clamped in there and I'll weld these and once I jack it all together I'll spot weld these up here and then they'll be tied in a lot better and then the, we'll of course do the floors so I'm gonna get after all that and then uh, hopefully the next time you see this it'll all be uh, at least partially welded together well guys I've been doing a lot of welding I think I have the cab and everything where it needs to be I have the uh, the rock this rocker here all welded up and I have some stitch welds started along the edge so uh, uh, it's going together pretty good uh, I got the measurements right for this door and that door and uh, that one was a little bit uh, uh, like a sixteenth of an inch off of what the measurement was. So I hung a door on there to make sure everything was going to work out. Now it's not like perfectly set because I just hung it on there. But uh, as you can see here, I think I think these, uh, you know, it needs to move a little bit in. But uh, you kind of get the idea. I was just checking the, the gaps to make sure I wasn't going to be way off on this door here. So uh, it all worked out, I think. I had the A pillar stitched together, uh, started over here. I had to cut out some rust over here on this one. Here's some of that rust. It was uh, uh, back in here, that piece was there. So there's a rust hole here and a rust hole here. So I went all the way through it and uh, this will be the inner piece and I had to replace part of the rocker. And then I'll cut another piece out of a cab and uh, be the outer piece and sandwich all that together and weld it all together like I did the other side. But uh, so far it's going really well. I thought it went together uh, pretty easy, easier than I thought it would anyway. On the A pillars here, you can see what I did. Uh, these holes here, there's a piece of metal in here, and uh, I'm going to sp uh, spot weld those together to kind of give it a double layer and uh, more welding so to hold all this together. Even though I think uh, you know the welding around that seam is going to be plenty strong. Uh, but uh, that extra extra security of having another plate behind there and see here I did three on this big section here So there's a big big plate behind here and it's double welded. So should be nice and strong at least stronger than uh, uh, The original metal here. I just you know didn't want this to be a weak point So over over did that that joint right there because the uh, rollover protection, you know You don't want uh, you don't want this given away if you do unfortunately have a wreck so uh, hopefully you don't have to worry about that at all in this truck but uh, uh, right now I am uh, I think I have it stitched together good enough I'm going to transfer it back over to my lift and uh, be able to weld the underside a lot easier than laying on the ground so uh, going to finish up that uh, that rust repair over there and uh, get it up on the lift and finish it up uh, underneath it but right now I'm kind of thinking on the, a name for this project and I kind of come up with the ultimate crew cab uh, you know, I have my ultimate high boy, my 67, white 67 uh, high, high boy we started this channel with uh, a couple years ago now. And uh, kind of thinking about calling this one the ultimate crew cab. I haven't kind of made up my mind yet on if I want to do that or not. But uh, kind of the ultimate crew cab to me would be like a all original high boy crew cab that's been untouched. And But that would be like the ultimate original crew cab. So this would be like the optimized crew cab, the ultimate I don't know. I was just thinking to have all the modern stuff, air conditioning, all that uh, electronic gauges and all that stuff would be be pretty neat to call this the ultimate uh, crew cab, kind of what I think would be the ultimate crew cab. So anyway, let me know what you guys think down below of that name of this project or if you have another name in mind you might be thinking of. So for now, I'm going to finish up that welding and then we'll start on the chassis, mating the chassis to this cab on the next episode. So you don't want to hit that, hit that subscribe button so you can see when that happens. Like this video if you like this project. I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching, guys.